Hi friends, welcome back to Liz's Reading Corner, or welcome if you're new here, I'm Liz and I like books and in this video we are going to be reading through Stephen King's top 10 scariest books according to Goodreads. Uh, I use Goodreads and Storygraph to track my reading, I use Storygraph more for like the percentages and to track my pages. Um, and I use Goodreads for everything else basically. I'm well aware that Goodreads and Storygraph both do lists. I just haven't really delved very deeply into Storygraph if I'm honest. Um, and if I was organized or if I was a more organized person at this point in time, I would have looked at both of at lists from both websites and compared them, but I am not that organized, at least not this year. So here we are. Goodreads it is. Um, I for full disclosure, have read eight of the ten books on this list. I haven't read Gerald's Game and I haven't read The Stand. The rest of the books I read when I was younger, much, much younger. I started reading Stephen King when I was about nine or ten years old, maybe eleven, like around there. Carrie was the first book that I read uh, and that is on this list as well. And so I've been reading Stephen King from a very young age. I didn't find any of them scary at the time. I can understand why a lot of these books people would consider them to be scary, but in most cases I haven't even, like the books haven't even really raised my blood pressure or like my heart rate. So it's going to be interesting reading them or rereading them as an older person and seeing how I feel about them. So yeah. So a lot of, like I said, a lot of these will be, or eight of these will be rereads. Uh, I am not looking forward to trying to get through it because I read that last year and it took a little bit to get through that one. I'm probably going to split this up into two vlogs. I just don't want them to be terribly, terribly long. Uh, I know I lose interest if things are too long and not very entertaining. Anyway, long rambly introduction aside, I have eight of the books borrowed from the library. The other two, so Gerald's Game and Cujo, I actually had to buy on Kindle, so I'll be reading them on my tablet, uh, which is probably a good thing because I read ebooks quicker than I read physical books most of the time. Uh, number 10 is Gerald's Game. I'm going to be reading that now, and so I will see you, or you'll see future me very shortly, I guess. So, um, yes, it looks like I'm wearing the same clothes. No, it is not the same day. I have finished Gerald's Game, thank goodness. I did not enjoy that book at all. Um, it took much longer than it should have to finish it. And if I'm honest, it should have just been a short story. I don't, I don't know. I don't quite understand. I do and I don't. I think it's more of like a visceral reaction from people when they read it. The idea of getting handcuffed to your bed and then stuck there for days at a time is scary to people. The whole, it's kind of, I guess, in the same realm as like being buried alive or starving to death in like while being trapped in a room or like a suffocating a storage container or that sort of thing like I think it's like a visceral reaction from people but at the same time I just found it to be boring it was not very imaginative I think the backstory from when she was a child is just more shock value than actual good writing honestly it is one of his worst stories i have read it's i can't even remember how many pages i think it was like 300 and something pages on my kindle and so i don't know how many because i i like, read it on the kindle so i don't know how many pages it is in like physical form but if i'm honest even with the backstory from her childhood Quite honestly, it could have been like 200 pages and it would have been a lot better. This is going to sound harsh, but I lost interest about 15% of the way through that book. There was no need for it to be that long. That is absolutely ridiculous. I just, it was boring. That was my biggest thing. It's boring and I didn't find it scary at all. Uh, the backstory annoyed me and the whole thing, quite honestly, was just very poorly written. Uh, I 
probably if I'm giving a star rating for these things, I would give it a one star. Uh, and on like a spooky rating, oh, I don't even know if I could rate it as spooky because I don't think it's scary at all. So I'd probably give it like a zero for spooky rating. Zero ghosts. Let's go ghosts. It's a spooky season. Let's go ghosts. We're going to give it one star and zero ghosts because it's not scary at all. But after that little rant, I am, this is my second day reading Christine. This is a reread. I already knew I would enjoy this book. I enjoyed it much, much more than Gerald's game. And I'm already almost halfway through. This one, I absolutely understand why people find it so scary. The um, horror scenes are quite graphic, which I already knew because I've read it before. And I am actually really enjoying this one. This one's going really, really quickly. So I am going to try and get through this one. And just enjoy myself after reading that very, very, very boring book before. So back to reading it is. I just finished reading uh, Christine. I still love that book. Oh my gosh, I love that book. I basically inhaled it. I can't believe how quickly I finished that book. I think it only took like a day or two, maybe two days. Um, I think two days, roughly. Like 700 and gosh how many pages was it 740 pages or something um it is raining i'm so happy it was so humid today and it is raining so it is the perfect time to be reading if i'm honest um i'm meant to be starting kujo but the problem is my tablet is dead so can't read Kujo right now. So in lieu of that, I am going to start reading Carrie. This was the first Stephen King book that I ever read and it has been quite a while since I've read it. So I'm actually quite looking forward to getting back into this. This is not my favourite but it's up there in probably the top I'd say the top five from memory. We'll see if that changes. We'll see if that changes. Things didn't really go the way that I had planned. I have not got as much reading done this week as I had initially intended, but I am uh, about halfway through Carrie. I've read this before. This was the first Stephen King book that I read, and I'm enjoying it just as much as every other time that I've read it. Um, it's only, it's probably one of its shortest, if I'm honest, books. Uh, it's like 200 pages or something. So I'm about halfway through that. So the plan is to get this finished tonight. And this is not going to happen. But I'm going to get this, the stand, started. So I'm going to have this started. And I was hoping to have this finished uh, by Thursday. And today is Thursday. So not getting finished by Thursday but we can at least try and start it so that's something um I was hoping to have all of this done so then I could edit and upload my video or this video this vlog um by Friday uh but yeah I don't think I'm going to get the stand finished by the time I get this vlog out so this one's probably going to go into the next vlog which is fine because they're connected anyway but I didn't realize until I picked this book up that this is actually one of his longest books so this book is 1211 pages so that is right up there with his longest books and it's probably going to take me a little while to read through so it's going to be interesting um The Stand is another book that I haven't read so the two on this list of Stephen King's books that I haven't read were Gerald's Game and The Stand. Gerald's Game I didn't enjoy at all. That was such a chore to read. Um, which you'll be hearing about when I do my roundup at the end of this video. So yes, I'm going to go and read Carrie and finish, we'll finish reading Carrie and get The Stand started tonight. I think it's going to be a long night. I'm having trouble sleeping lately. I say that, but the last couple of nights have just absolutely crashed. Um, my husband was sick earlier in the week, and 
and I think me worrying about him, me worrying about him being sick, is fine now, but me worrying about him being sick just kind of exhausted me, but now I'm at the stage where I'm just not tired again, and I've been having this problem for the last few weeks where I go between being not tired in the slightest and absolutely exhausted, and there's just no in between, so it's not great when you're making plans for reading, but hopefully tonight my insomnia means that I get a lot read. So, fingers crossed. It is, uh, not Friday, it is Monday. Um, I had to have a blood test for some health related concerns. So, I'm anemic, which is unsurprising. I've been anemic for years, but that means that when I get a blood test, I sleep for days or I'm exhausted for days, depending on my levels. So, I got no uh, Stephen King reading done. I needed books that I didn't have to actually concentrate on. So I did get some reading done. Just no Stephen King or Halloween related reading done at all. So that means that I am absolutely not on track and I am so sorry for that. Um, but it means that I am starting the stand today like I said, it's like a thousand and something pages, 1100 pages, 1200 pages, something insane like that. So I'm going to try and get that finished this week and hopefully it will only take a couple of days. It depends on how good the writing is, I guess. And then I can start on, where am I? The last five Stephen King books that I have sitting there, which I have all read. So they will hopefully go a bit quicker. So yeah. I am going to go pick up my little man from school because it's school pickup time and I am going to start reading the stand. I finished the stand, finally, dear god that has got to be one of the worst Stephen King books I've ever read. So we're at the halfway point, I've read five of the ten books and I figured it would be a good idea to just do like a quick wrap up of them and to just like split this vlog into two parts because it's, there's just, it's gonna be too long basically. Number 10 was Gerald's Game. I hadn't read Gerald's Game before. I realise uh, now that I hadn't actually gone into what the stories are about. I'm just assuming that people know what these Stephen King books are about and that's probably a very bad thing. Uh, the basic premise of Gerald's Game is that this woman and her husband go to their summer house and um, the husband's I need to try and figure out a way to make this YouTube friendly. The husband's kind of just gotten into BDSM type relations uh, and so the wife is handcuffed to the bed while they're having relations and the wife decides that she doesn't want this to happen anymore and she's never really liked being handcuffed to anything and so she decides that she doesn't want to do it anymore and um, while she's trying to explain to her husband no, he has a heart attack and dies. All of that happens within the first like chapter or so, like the first like portion of the, the first like 10 pages basically of the book. And then the rest of the book, which is like 300 odd pages, maybe close to 400 pages, is just her story of trying to get out of these handcuffs which uh, so because her husband is a lawyer, he manages to find a police officer that will sell him, um, police issue handcuffs, so they're police issue handcuffs that she's trying to get out of, um, and obviously because she can't really move and there's, like, no water or anything around her, she starts to become, or she thinks she's delirious, she sees this person standing in the corner of the room at night time, so basically about three quarters of the book is her trying to get out of these handcuffs. And to deal with like all of the mental um, load of being handcuffed to a bed thinking she might die and that sort of thing uh, she eventually gets away and she tells her lawyer but she doesn't tell the police that there was someone standing in the corner of the room I think it was she tells someone and they don't believe her but then it comes out that actually there was this person who is actually a serial killer who had been going around and killing people and eating them and that was actually the person that was standing in the room with her. So she very narrowly escapes being killed by a serial killer and eaten by a serial killer. So yeah, that honestly, that book, 
oh that is also up there in one of the worst books I've ever read of Stephen King I don't understand it I don't understand why people find it so scary I don't understand why people like it so much it is really poorly written I didn't enjoy the characters just the whole thing could have been a novella and it would have been so much better honestly I would have enjoyed it if it was less than 200 pages because that entire story could have fit into 200 pages there was no need to drag it out as long as it was dry it was it was dragged out it was just ridiculous so I didn't enjoy that at all so because I decided to do spooky rating as well as uh, star rating I gave it one star and zero ghosts because it was very poorly written and I didn't find it scary at all so number nine was Christine um, I've read this book before so this one was a reread I like I've said so many times before I read Stephen King from when I was in primary school uh, I read uh, Christine I think when I was in high school the first time I've read it a couple of times since Christine I understand Christine was one of the first Stephen King books that actually kind of creeped me out a little bit uh, Christine is basically about this uh, 58 Plymouth Fury that is bought by one of the main characters or by the main character's friend I should say because it's actually mostly told from uh, the perspective of Arnie's friends who I've forgotten the name of so it is told from the perspective of Dennis who is the friend of Arnie Arnie buys this 58 Plymouth Fury who the uh, one and only owner calls Christine. She's an absolute rusted out piece of junk basically that they saw on the side of the road. He pays what is considered far too much money and everything just kind of snowballs in Arnie's life from there. Uh, he has a massive fight with his parents who are both professors. They are overly controlling and have this plan for their son and that's just what's going to happen for him as far as they're concerned. Once Arnie uh, buys this car however that's not what happens he ends up um storing it at a local garage that you hire like a stall and you can use like the tools and things um to like fix up your car basically it's just one of those places where like you can just go to to fix up your car if you just don't have the tools at home um because his parents don't want him to take this rusted up piece, piece of junk in their opinion um to their house and slowly the car or it seems that Arnie is able to fix up this car um, he ends up getting a girlfriend and uh, everything seems to be like happy days basically um, the only person who seems to be happy with the car however is Arnie himself everyone else is deeply unsettled by this car it gives off like creepy vibes and um, bad things just seem to happen to anyone who doesn't like the car basically and there is like a little bit of a backstory so the guy who Arnie bought the car from his name is George George LeBay so Arnie buys this car from George LeBay and um, George LeBay dies not long after Arnie buys the car and uh, Dennis and Arnie go to George's funeral where they meet George's brother who I'm never gonna remember the name of and um, Dennis goes back after the funeral is finished and talks to his brother, so LeBay's brother, and finds out that LeBay's daughter choked to death in the car and his wife unalived herself in the car. However, the brother thinks that it was the car that killed them and not like accidents or that sort of thing. And then, so after a while, the car is drivable, Arnie gets to drive his girl around, uh, but there is an incident at school because these kids are all at school still in their, their final year of school, uh, and the school bully has a fight with Arnie, pulls a knife on him, and then gets expelled. Um, and somewhere in there, Arnie's dad decides that it would be safer for him to store the car at the airport instead of at the garage where he's storing it. So they store it at the airport, he stores it at the airport and this bully finds out that his car is there and takes all of his friends and goes and trashes the car basically. Arnie somehow miraculously manages to fix the car again and then people start dying from hit and runs. And we know, because we're reading the book obviously, so we know that it's Christine doing these things. However, everyone else is only suspecting it, including a police officer. And so there's just a bunch of mysterious deaths from all of the people who just 
have like an opposition to Christine or who have wronged Christine in the past and it all culminates in this thing where Arnie goes out of town with his oh all of these people die also when Arnie except for one person all of these people die when Arnie is out of town so Arnie is, is not there and has an alibi so the police can't actually prove that it is him and they can't just like they don't obviously think that this car is driving itself around so this all culminates in the end when uh Dennis and Arnie's girlfriend Lee organized to basically destroy the car because they figured out that she is the one that is killing people and that it's like just this evil entity. Arnie is out of town with his mother. His father is killed before they manage to destroy the car and once they manage to basically destroy the car, basically at the time that the car is destroyed, Arnie and his mother have a massive car accident on the way home because they're going to look at colleges. Um, so they have a massive car accident on the way home and so the car is dead, Arnie and all of his family is dead and that's the end of the story. Um, I don't think I did a very good job explaining it but it is actually a really quite a good book. It is very well written. If you're going to read any of Stephen King's books on this list I would say this one would be one of the ones that you should preference because in my opinion this is one of his best work uh, this is one of his best works so star rating wise i would probably give it i think i gave it a four on goodreads so i'd give it a four stars and spooky wise i would give it a three out of five ghosts because it is quite spooky um it's not like the scariest thing i've read but it's pretty it's Pretty spooky and it's really well paced too like there's not a lot of downtime in the, in the pacing of the book number eight is another one of my favorites that was Carrie um, basically there is this girl who was born into or born to a hyper religious mother after her father um, died she is a social pariah so she's a social outcast no one wants anything to do with her basically um, her mother is really quite abusive Quite honestly um, there is so trigger warnings for this book there is child abuse in the book um, not just from the mother like there's child abuse from the mother but there's also like abusive behaviors between students as well so Carrie is like this social pariah like a social outcast and uh, she actually gets her first period in the showers after gym class and doesn't realize that that is what has happened and so she thinks she's dying and all of the girls in her gym class are quite horrible to her and it's not handled very well basically it's really quite sad to read and to imagine and so what follows is just like a snowball effect basically of just events and so one of the girls who was involved in this um, incident feels bad and so she talks to her boyfriend Tommy and eventually she asks him to take Carrie to the prom because that is like they're about to have their senior prom it's like the last prom that they'll ever get to go to and um after finding out that she doesn't have any ulterior or doesn't appear to have any ulterior motives Tommy agrees Tommy uh asks Carrie to the prom. As a result of what the girls in this gym class did, they had to, they are punished basically uh, for being horrible and bullying the student. The uh, main bully from the year level, Chris or Christine, um, she refused, or Christine sorry, but Chris, she refuses to take the punishment for what she has done. She believes that she's done nothing wrong and because her father is like a prominent lawyer in the town, she thinks that she can just get away with not going to detention. Punishment for not going to the detention is refusal of going to the prom so they aren't allowed to buy a prom ticket. And so because the principal won't budge on allowing her to go to prom, she comes up with a revenge on Carrie. So she wrote, Chris wrote her boyfriend Billy into helping her get revenge on Carrie because she sees it as Carrie's fault for not, uh, for just existing. So she thinks that her punishment is Carrie's fault just because Carrie exists. And so we get to the prom and uh, it's all nice and Tommy and Carrie are enjoying themselves. Carrie's actually having a good time. She thinks that it's all too good to be true, basically. And unfortunately for her, it does kind of end up being too good to be true. So Chris and Billy 
uh, for Chris's revenge plan, end up getting two buckets of pig pig's blood and putting it up above the stage, um, right over where the king and queen's chair is. Spoilers if you haven't actually read the book or seen the movie. Tommy and Carrie are voted king and queen of prom, and Chris pulls the buckets of pig's blood down and coats Carrie and Tommy with it. It's horrific. It's disgusting. So the big part in all of this is actually that Carrie is telekinetic and she has telekinetic powers. She can make things move with just her mind. And this incident triggers her telekinesis and all hell breaks loose. So she runs out of prom covered in pig's blood. Someone trips her over on, on her way out and she just sees it as like this big joke that everyone is in on and they've all just played her um, so that they could just make this joke against her or a uh, prank on her. And so she runs out and then decides, you know what? No, I'm not going to take this anymore. And so she locks them all in and uses her powers to set off the sprinklers, which then triggers the band's equipment and a fire breaks out. So most of the kids are actually burnt alive or crushed to death in the gym. And then Carrie just goes on this telekinetic, telekinetic rampage through town. Most of the townspeople are actually killed. And it is pretty horrific what goes on it is absolutely insane what goes on. and yeah it's just a really sad story about how out of hand bullying can get and i really enjoyed the book i always will i think enjoy the book it's a really quick read it's really fast paced like there's not very much downtime again much like christine there's very little downtime i think it's really well written and again if you were going to read a Stephen King book, I would say probably either Carrie or Christina, two of the best that he has written. And I would highly recommend both of them. Uh, Carrie, I gave four stars and spooky wise, I'd probably only give it probably a two, like two ghosts, because while it is spooky, we know that telekinesis is not a thing. It's not really going to happen. Like there's no realism that's going to scare you within the book but it is really well written so i do think it's well worth the read so that brings us to number seven which is kujo and i knew if any of the books on this list were going to get me it would be kujo and kujo absolutely got me uh kujo is about this dog i can't remember what breed it is but it's just this big i think bitza dog no not bitza saint bernard saint bernard I'm pretty sure it's saint bernard it's just this big dog who uh is one day chasing a rabbit and this rabbit disappears down this hole which happens to also have bats in it that are infected with rabies and so one of the bats scratches Cujo, Cujo gets infected with rabies because Cujo has never had a uh, rabies shot in his life and um, he turns rabid and he just starts killing people so he kills the owner's friend who lives in the next house over and then the owner he doesn't kill the owner's wife and son because they are actually out of town visiting the wife's family. But the owner, and I can't remember his name, but the owner is also a mechanic. There is this woman who has just moved to town with her husband who is in an advertise who is in advertising. He has opened his own advertising firm with one of his friends that he worked in at the previous firm that they worked at. So they've moved out to the suburbs and um, they're kind of doing it tough because they've just started this ad um, business. Uh, so Donna is uh, the wife of Vic, who is one of the guys who started the advertising agency, and they have a son called Tad. And so Donna's car is playing up. There's something wrong with it. I can't remember what it is. Something's wrong with her car. It randomly just doesn't like to work, or it randomly heats up. It just randomly stops running, basically. And so Vic tells Donna to take it over to Joe's owner's place. I'm going to have to Google what it is. Joe. Joe Camber. So... Donna takes her car to Joe's place. Joe is the owner of Cujo. He is the guy, that, the second one that Cujo kills. And uh, so Donna goes over there not realizing that Joe is actually dead already and that Cujo has got rabies. And so she gets stuck there. The car dies, obviously, as they get, because it's been having problems. So the car dies as they get into um, the driveway. They're like 
right near the workshop, right near the house. And so she's got Tad in the car with her and she goes to get out and then realizes that Kujo is not acting right and she's a bit suspicious of him. And then he tries to attack her, so she then realizes that he's got rabies or he's got something wrong with him. And she is trapped in the car with Tad for two days during one of the worst heat waves in their town in history. Now, Tad is like a four-year-old boy. And you have to read through them going through all of the effects of like dehydration and being stuck in this car in over, it's like over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, I believe, um, for two days before they are actually rescued or before anyone sort of realizes where they are. And as the mother to a seven-year-old son, that broke me. That was really, really difficult to read. I cried. I had to get my husband to come in when I finished reading and I like cried. I was so so upset. It really upset me because I couldn't imagine having to go through that. That would be horrendous and yeah that really got me. So um, rating wise I think I gave it a four. It's a good book. It is a good book but be aware that it can get you in the feels. Spooky wise, I don't think it's very spooky at all. It's just, it's it's a dog with rabies. Um, I'm not a dog person anyway. I'm more of a cat person. I've never really liked dogs. I've been bitten by dogs a few times. And I just, this, every time I have anything to do with dogs, I'm just kind of like, reinforces why I don't like them. Um, so I already didn't like dogs. And this is not the first time for me reading this book. So this hasn't really changed or my opinion on dogs. But I can see why people would find it creepy. Especially knowing. Because we don't have rabies in Australia. Um, but I do know that rabies is in America. So I can see why people would find it creepy. Or spooky or whatever. I don't find it creepy or spooky. Uh, I don't think that rabies is really creepy or spooky. That being said. Probably only give this like a one because it is it's like a little bit a few moments where it is a bit scary like where the dog is trying to attack the people like where the dog where Cujo attacks people that is a bit scary but otherwise it's not I don't think it's a very creepy or spooky so I'll give that one probably yeah just a one ghost it's not in my opinion not very creepy at all that brings us to the last book which is The Stand and dear god dear god that book is so so long it is. This book is 1200 and something pages and it is about a thousand pages too long. There is no need for it to be 1200 pages. Um, the Stand is basically about this uh, scientifically engineered uh, flu, very much like what we've just basically gone through, and uh, it escapes the facility where they are developing it and is transferred to one of the security guards who runs home and he manages to just get out before the facility is locked down and he takes his wife and his their baby daughter and flees and manages to get across i think it's like two states or something and then starts to infect the people so he dies he crashes a car into a petrol station and uh dies on the way to the hospital because people that were at the petrol station I guess I don't call it petrol fuel station I'm just gonna call it petrol station that's what we call it um and the mother and baby are already dead in the car he dies on the way to the hospital and if they infect everyone so anyone who is in close contact with anyone who is sick infects everybody else it's like a 99.4 or something infection rate and basically uh, your glands swell up, you are filled, your body becomes filled with mucus and you just eventually suffocate or you just die. Uh, almost everyone dies. Uh, there are also dogs and horses also can contract it and die, which is interesting. Um, and so, and yeah, society just collapses. And then um, after the initial wave, there's like another wave of illness my washing machine is going off so that's what you can hear in the background just in case you're wondering um so there's a second wave of uh, illness which is which kills another i think it was like 30 percent or something of people and 
yeah, the rest of the book. So that happens within the first 300 pages. And then the rest of the book is just about how the survivors are um, living and existing and how society is like getting back together. Honestly, it took me a week. So I was, so it's Friday today. I was intending on having this entire vlog finished a week ago and uh, life and uni obviously have got in the way of that. But also, and I've been reading this book, or I've read The Stand as like as frequently as I could. Like every opportunity I had to read, I was reading it and it still took me a week because I was so bored. I was so bored a hundred pages in that I almost DNF'd it. And if it wasn't for the fact that I was reading it for this, I would have DNF'd it. This is so boring. I don't find it scary. I can understand why people find it scary, especially now after having gone through um, the pandemic a couple of years ago or a few years ago. I can understand why people would find it scary because I guess they think we came very close or we were not even close to that. But that could have been, I guess, in people's minds. And... So I guess maybe that's where they're coming from, but quite honestly, don't read it. Don't, don't. Just don't. Do yourself a favour and just don't. Because it is a thousand pages too long. It is, in my opinion, really not interesting. It's not scary and it's full of unnecessary fluff. There is no need for all of these different perspectives. Like there's so many different perspectives of things like where people are just dying that you you could cut out and I think I think quite honestly if you cut all of those out you would halve the book there's that much in there so just to warn you there is a lot of just extra fluff in there I didn't enjoy it I gave it one star and I would probably much like Gerald's game ah uh, actually much like Cujo, I would, I'll give it one, one spooky, so one ghost, but just don't read it, honestly. I don't think it's scary, it's not very interesting, it's definitely not one of his, his best books. And it just feels like it was written, I don't know, beat like the longest book record, that's kind of, that's kind of how it feels. It feels like it was written this way, so that it was just a really long book. That's it. So, that's it for part one. I hope my ramblings have made sense. Uh, I am working on part two. I am actually in the middle of reading Misery, which is a very different pace from the stand. And I will have a new video for you very, very soon. So with all of that being said, have you read these books? What is your favorite Stephen King book? Or if you don't read Stephen King, what is your favorite spooky book? Because I can understand not wanting to read Stephen King. I have been off of Stephen King books for quite a few years now and I would love to actually find some new horror authors that I haven't read that are not Stephen King. So uh, leave your comments down below for me. Um, I'll check out any book that you recommend. I'm also in the middle of working on a video of uh, book recommendations from my viewers so that will be coming out very soon as well. Um, yeah, if you, I don't know how to end this, this, this video now. Um, if you enjoy what I do here, please like, share and subscribe. If you have anything that you think I would enjoy reading or a challenge you think I would enjoy doing, please let me know in the comments down below and I will see you all very, very soon.